Jesus, we want you to stay with us. I don't want to take over in any way. Church, think about it. If Jesus walked in the room, why would we feel any need to conjure something up by our own power? We just rest in his presence with us. And praying that, that you would know that Jesus loves you and wants to be with you. We don't have to beg him to come into a room with us. He's waiting. He's desiring. He's longing to be with us. That's what the cross was all about. We weren't pursuing him. We were his enemies. We were just doing whatever felt good. And he looked upon his creation. He looked at us and says, I want to bring them to me. I want to go down there and be with them. And then when he left the earth, he's telling them, Father, I want to take them all with me so they can be with me in heaven and see me in my glory because I don't want to live without them. And I confess for too long I've just been focusing on like working and, and like begging him And I've been praying for myself, God, help me know your love. Like, know your love. Just like a couple weeks ago when we talked about the throne of grace, and it was like, oh, I never saw your holy throne as a throne of grace. But now that I see it, and I know it in my head, but I want to know it. Like most of you would say, you know that God so loved the world, but do you mean that? Like from the core of your being, do you just know at the core of you who you are that God loves you? I was noticing as we were worshiping, I was going, God, I, I love you. And it's easier for me to say, I love you, than it is to say, I believe you love me. And that's probably true for a lot of us in this room. It's easier for us to say, I love you, than it is to go, God, I know you love me. I am so sure you love me. Why is that? God's been, you, you remember how I, I said, let's, let's pray. Let's pray that God would show us where we're deceived. And God just keeps answering that prayer and showing me, no, you have this wrong about me. You don't see this side of me clearly. Please keep praying that prayer. God, show me where I've been deceived because we're all deceived in some way. And so to humble yourself and say, God, you've got to open my eyes. I've just seen some things that have been twisted in my mind, that the enemy has just twisted in my mind about the love of God. In Romans chapter 5, verse 10, many of you know this verse. It says, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God 
by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. God was showing me things about this verse this week. This is where he was showing me how my mind is, is, is twisted in some way. He says, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. So here's, here's what I noticed about myself, and this may be true of some of you, so I feel like I'm supposed to bring it up tonight. Like, I know that I am saved by grace. I don't deserve any of it. It's because God so loved me and because he's a God of mercy. He saw me like that first part of the verse. Like I know I did nothing to earn his love. I was an enemy of God. I, I was dead in my trespass and sins. I had nothing to offer him. He didn't look down and say, wow, now there's a good kid. No, he saw me in my rebellion, my sin, my selfishness, and he came after me. And so I get, I go, I did nothing to earn my salvation. I did nothing to earn his love. And I am saved by grace through faith. The Bible is so clear so that no one can boast. But here's where I get screwed up. My day-to-day -day life. Somehow, I get this sense like, he loves me more when I've been obeying him through the week. It's like, okay, he loves me more. Or this week, he loves me less. And, and I would never, like, teach that. I'm just telling you how it feels and how somehow naturally, it's, it's like what Paul told the Galatians. He goes, well, you started by faith, and then you kind of made works take over. You understood God's grace, but then something messed you up. And you start thinking to stay in his love, I've got to do certain things. And so I, I kind of separate like God's one-time act of love and my salvation. And it's almost like after he did that for me, now you're on your own and now you earn your love by living a good life every week. I just feel that sometimes. And uh, I'm not gonna blame it on daddy issues and having a dad who put me up for adoption and didn't want me and I never earned his love, you know? It's just, I was blind to it. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand the love of God. But what this verse says is while we were enemies, if, if, when I was an enemy of God, he came down and reconciled me to him, he goes, if that's true, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. He's saying, wait, if he loved you back then when you were rebellious and you're an enemy of God, now that you're a son of God, how much more is he going to save me from my sin every week and save me from myself? See, I, I entered into a relationship. I'm a son of God now. So how did Satan get in my head to think, well, he loved me when I was an enemy and pursued me, but now that I'm a son, somehow his love's diminished, and now his love is based upon my actions? No, God loves because he is love. It's out of who he is. And somehow this earning creeps in. And then we would say, well, not for salvation, but for like his daily grace, this daily relationship. If while we were sinners, 
we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. God was uh, showing me too how the way I look at his love is, is different from how I look at other things. Okay, I want you to think right now um, of a physically strong person. Like who is the, who's the strongest person you've ever met physically? I still remember, I, I know exactly on top. I, I went to baptize a guy years ago and for some reason he came up, shook my hand, big guy. He goes, hi, I'm the strongest man in the world, ESPN. And he really was. I'm like, okay, nice to meet you. I'm Francis. You know, but it was just, I mean, I had to baptize. Like he just barely fit seriously in the baptismal pool and his wife could bench press 400 pounds. I was like, this is scary. Okay, so strongest person I've ever seen, ever known. Think to yourself, who's the biggest, strongest person you've ever seen? Okay, now compare that person's strength to God's. If you had to give a fraction, what would that fraction be of, of his strength? That what, what fraction of God's strength is that? His, his power compared to that person. Okay, now I want you to think of the most intelligent person you know. Maybe it was a professor. How many are thinking me? Thanks, honey. Think of the most intelligent person you know. Like, you just go, wow, this guy is on the next level. I don't even understand half what he says. He's talking about things, you know, like, I don't even know those words. But, uh, Who is it? Who do you have in your mind? Now compare his or her mind to God's. Okay, it's just, it's comical, right? It's silly. He's, he's omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. Now think about the most loving person you know. Who do you just think, man, this person loves. Oh, this person loves me so much. Who's the most loving person you can think of on the earth right now? that you know, you go, man, she is so loving, or he just never thinks of himself. He's always thinking about nothing. He's just so good at loving. Why do I have this gap where when it comes to the love of God, I treat it different from his knowledge, his strength. I get it. That's light years, but when it comes to love, I somehow bring him down to a human level. Like he, he, he maybe loves me as much as Lisa does. Or as much as one of my kids loves me. Or maybe, maybe as much as I love my kids. Or the, do we not believe in the infinite love of God? That you think about that one time when you were loved by someone so deeply compare that to the love of Christ God was showing me you don't trust in my love I know he's holy I know he's all powerful I know that he's all knowing do I believe that God is love and his love is infinitely beyond any of ours and that he feels that way about me today, this week? Do I trust in the love of God? Do I know the love of Christ? I 
I mean, I know it. Like, if you gave me a test and does he love me, I would check that box. But again, if you study, like, church history, they would just, you know, the pastors, the leaders, I mean, they didn't say, oh, he knows this, he knows this. They would follow. They would live in close quarters and make sure that this person knows the love of Christ. It's they've tasted of it. You can tell me all the ingredients and, you know, some recipe, but if you've never tasted it and known it, and it's just, ah, oh, that familiar smell and taste and everything, and it's in me. Like, is that the love of God in your life where you just go, I, I am so loved by him? And there's even something twisted in my mind where, where, I feel like it's, and this is the enemy, like I'm being arrogant if I say, King Jesus, the Lord of the universe, is insanely like crazy about me. His, you guys don't even know. You have no clue how much he loves me, specifically. Like there's some twisted side in me that thinks, oh, I should be humble and kind of go, well, you know, I, you know, I think he's, he's okay with me and, and, you know, he loves me because he loves the world rather than tasting it and looking you in the eyes and going, I promise you this God loves me so much more than anyone's ever even come close to loving you. This God, Jesus, loves Francis Chan so much. Do you know how much Jesus loves Francis Chan? Even knowing what I've done, knowing all my failures, I, I don't know a lot of things, but to, to be able to say, he loves me. Is that you today? Do you know that you're loved? If not, you'll end up doing things for Christ's love rather than from his love. And it's so easy to fall into that. I've done it. And God's showing me I've done it. So keep praying that prayer, Lord. Just reveal to me where I'm deceived. Reveal to me where my mind has gotten twisted. I just think, you know, what if uh, my son Silas, you know, like what if he comes up to me and says, Dad, I, I just cleaned my room. I did all my homework. Everything's in order. And I took out the trash. So do you love me now? I'd be like, what are you talking about? You think that's what makes me love you? Like it's offensive to me as a human being. As a mediocre dad, I'm going, that is really rude and that's really offensive to me and yet I do that to the Lord whose love is infinitely beyond mine like okay this was a good week look what I did look how early I got up how I prayed how I read how I did this look at my thought life look back this week now do you love me like God loves because he's love God is love. And it's out of his love for us that now we can love other people. But that's what I mean by you work from his love. It's because he loves us that, and you're so secure in that that now it's like, oh God, I just, 
It's your kindness that makes me want to repent. It's the kindness of the Lord that leads us to repentance, Ephesians 2, 4 says. And God was showing me, I, oftentimes it's my fear of God that causes me to repent, that leads me to repentance. It's the holiness of God that leads me to repentance. But he says in scripture, no, it's my kindness because I'm patient with you. I'm so kind. Do you think of him as just kind? This holy, all-powerful God. That's why they, they have that word loving kindness. It's, it's like they, they, they couldn't quite figure out how to you know, translate this word, and so they had to make a new word for God. It's his loving kindness is greater than life. 